Well, look who came back home. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. If you've been watching my show for six years, you're definitely going to remember this one. But for everyone else, brace yourselves for one of the cleanest original Marauders still to exist. About a year or so into my professional guitar dealership journey, I ran across a seller on eBay that was selling a whole bunch of really good stuff just at open auction. And after winning a few items from him, I just messaged and said, hey, are you going to be listing anything else? So he invited me up to his house in Michigan, and it was this giant mansion of a place. And he had some impressive stuff, including a Gibson Heritage Series Modern prototype. But I ended up taking a lot of it home with me, and this was one of them. It's the Gibson Marauder. Now these are by no means rare or highly desirable guitars even yet today. It's basically Gibson's take on a Telecaster, more specifically a Telecaster Custom, because it looks like you got a humbucker in the neck and a single coil in the bridge. They're technically both humbuckers, but these were introduced in 1974 and lasted in the catalogs till 79. However, yes, you can still find them until about 1982 as they're using up old parts, because it's in 1980 that the Gibson signed comes out and takes over the whole bolt-on neck production guitar thing that looks like a Les Paul. Because that's kind of what this is. Les Paul body shape, flying V headstock, and a whole bunch of plethora of choices over the years. The sister model to this one being the Gibson S1, which is kind of like a Stratocaster version. And then you can kind of lump in the L6S with these guitars as well. More specifically, the Midnight Special being a bolt-on neck variety. Now, when it comes to specs of Marauders and colors and things like that, it gets kind of dicey because these were relatively cheap, inexpensive guitars. They would give them the factory seconds to Paul Stanley of Kiss to smash them up. But here's at least some of the options you can potentially find. Bodies made of maple, alder, or mahogany. Fretboards made of maple or rosewood. Black painted headstock caps, as well as bare natural ones. A control layout with a toggle switch on the horn, a blend knob on the horn, or a blend knob down by the controls. You can find black solid color covered pickups or a see-through version, and finishes ranging from a natural satin to a wine red to ebony to sunburst, and occasionally in the 80s when they're using up stuff you can find like orange and other cool colors. And that's just the regular Marauders. There's also something called the Marauder Custom. These guys are really cool. It's the kiss nose looks ain't everything guitar. <laughs> <laughs> you can check out this episode to learn more. But basically, you get the multiply pick guard and you get binding along the neck and slightly fancier inlays. And as far as I'm aware, only the rosewood fretboard option, but maybe a maple one could exist. And with all these, the tuners change throughout the years. There's so many different versions of these guitars out there. You can even find the Marauder Customs with the different control <laughs> layouts. But here's the thing that's truly remarkable about these. The natural finished ones did start life as a satin finish. Not all the colors were, but the fact that we have one that hasn't been naturally buffed up over the years. The reason why they all look like a semi-gloss to a gloss yet today is the same reason why the Paul does. Satin finishes naturally buff if you play them at all. So this thing, the story was around the mid-2000s, the collector found a store that was closing that kept one of like many models back as like new old stock just in their private collection and they were liquidating it. He also had an S1 in his collection, but somebody else got to it before I could. But right here over on the edge, you can see where it's been rested in the case and is naturally kind of buffed up a little bit. But I sold this, I think it was around 2018, 2019, but the guy who I sold it to reached out to me about six or so months ago and said, hey, I'm ready to sell it. Are you ready to buy it back? To which I said, sure, here's twice as much money than I sold it for. But this is a very late 1979 example. And as the evolution of the Marauder goes, the blend knob down here is the final control layout, and the black pickup covers is the other thing that happens later on. So maybe not as impressive as like a 74 example lasting in this kind of condition, but hey, it's not too bad. But what else is fun is let's check out the case. The case is equally as clean. I mean, it's got some like Tolex chips in a few small areas, but this is a survivor of a case that usually gets ultra beat up too. It's got all our lid ribbons, 
But check this out. To be honest, I forgot it had all this stuff. Because you got to remember, when I first ran into this, I didn't know just how rare this was and the fact that I would never see another one. But it's filled out Marauder Walnut Satin. It's got the matching serial number. This is your warranty card. And it even still has it for the case. However, knowing what I know now, this is actually for the Protector series. So technically it's not correct for this case so maybe it jumped around cases at some point in time or the dealer just threw this paperwork in with it but this is correct to still see but unfortunately no original gibson strap if you want to see what a really well preserved everything kept example looks like check out my brazilian rosewood les paul custom episode but hey we've got our still sealed packet of case keys too let's just say i'm not going to be dumb enough to let this one go again because you just won't find a nicer satin finished original marauder so let's go ahead and carefully take a look at its parts and specs. We never did that last time. And then we'll get on to a playing demo. Inside our satin friend, you might have noticed I never said anything about a walnut finish on these when I was talking about the colors. That's because that script that I've memorized comes from the shipping ledgers, and that's like mid-70s. There were also like, I think it was like 202 unaccounted for finishes at that point in time. But remember, once you get to the late 79 into 80, they start to play with a whole bunch of stuff. But these dark walnut ones start to come into play because you got to remember, this is like when the Paul was introduced. So maybe they were trying to make these look similar to that, make somebody fall in love with it. Uh, let's go ahead and check out in here. So it's a giant swimming pool route. And I always thought this one was made of mahogany and I can finally 100% confirm it because we can see a few areas where there's some tape that masked off the finishing job. And if you look at the cavity in the right lighting it has 926 written on it i've got no idea what that means but it's there uh, this is what the route for an original marauder looks like the reason why it's a little bit deeper right here is that's where your output jack is and they run a ground wire into this stud and now let's check out our electronics the later ones have the black covers but they're the exact same pickups they're still clear on the outside but they are epoxy coated apparently gibson didn't want anybody copying the bill lawrence design pickups here they can see our traditional humbucker looking one has a date of march 1st 1970 and our blade humbucker looks like February 22nd of 79. And then we got some sort of a date stamp that got smudged here. However, it might say March 1st, 1979. You got to squint to read that one. But this pot is the 26th week of 1978 solder work looks good same 78 code on that one as well as this and here's a look at our output jack now if you're taking apart marauders and l6s guitars s1s be very careful because you'll notice they don't use the same braided shielding wiring and it is common for them to snap especially the l6s these ones I've never really had too big of a problem with, but you, you've got to be careful with these things. So this is your blender knob. But there we go. The scariest part of today's episode is over. <laughs> Nothing broke. Well, we can take a look at our black covers. Personally, I really like the look of the original see-through. These are kind of weird, quirky guitars to begin with. So to have that, I think it just works. But I could also understand why they're like, hey, why don't we try something new towards the end of the run? Maybe people don't like the see-through technology. But this kind of helps you see the coils of our neck pickup as well as the rails of the bridge. Now, if you're thinking, hey, I can just take off those covers. No. Remember, these are epoxy coated. Could you? Yes. However, you're probably going to destroy the pickup in the process. <laughs> now, are the covers perfect? No, it looks like the strings were resting against them a little bit. Well, from a couple feet away, it looks good. But here's the other crazy thing about this one. The fact that we still have the dots and the T and the R, because these are just screen printed on the guards. So when people would play them, they would just naturally start to wear away. So seeing them nice and fresh is cool. But this speed knob is your master volume, and this is a master tone. And then remember, this is a blending switch. I've never been a big fan of this because if it was really just treble to rhythm like that, okay, that's easy enough to go. But it's actually from here all the way to there so it can get kind of cumbersome if you just want to go neck middle bridge real quick but for recording purposes some guys really like the blend knobs so for example all the way bridge pickup is 2.24k ohms all the way neck pickup is 5.57 but you can go somewhere in between and get all different kinds of readings as it blends them all together so i'll do my best to give you some tones of each and also during this playing demo i'll show you when i first played it a couple of years ago back when i was using my mesa boogie amp just to give you some tonal variations to the marshall blues breaker that i'm using today but i do remember i had a fantastic time with this guitar the first round but now let's take a look at our bridge and tailpiece you might notice hey 
That's not your usual stuff here. This is a harmonica bridge. They were essentially just trying to use these things up for the most part on the Marauders. Sometimes even very late the Pauls will end up getting these things. They were designed as a premium product because hey, you get so much more adjustment room on here. And if their neck fits were just a little bit off, they could compensate for it. But this particular one is the branded version, made in Germany. And the first thing to go on these is always the slotted spot for adjustment because they strip out very easily. Easily. So it's awesome to see one that has likely never been touched. But you gotta remember, we're in the Norland era. You can see some minor chip out around the route here. And the neck fits are never perfect on these guys. You can see gaps. As far as our tailpiece, it's just your regular full weight one. But now we can move on from our mahogany body onto the maple neck. Now what's kind of interesting about the satin marauders is the fact that it's just the body that they were saving money on. The neck is the exact same as the full gloss model. So you get the glossy fretboard and the back of the neck. This is not something that was polished up at one point in time and it started life satin. No, that's just how they all were including the face of the headstock. Now, I did decide to polish up the frets because, hey, if this is supposed to look new old stock, we might as well make the frets look really cool too. And since I didn't have to worry about anything being buffed up, I could do that with a guilt-free mind. Now, these are cool with the first fret inlay right there, and it's just mother of pearl dots. In this example, we're very lucky. It's got some really cool wood grain to it. I've always liked that about this one. So it's a miracle the body matches it being in good shape. I measure a 1.68 inch nut with increasing to 2.07, first fret neck up, and 0.96 by the 12th with a 12 inch fretboard radius and our usual 24 3 quarter inch scale. Here's the neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret, just a nice rounded C shape. Now we can look at the face of the headstock. Truss rod's in perfect shape, nothing to be scared of there. And the cover is beautifully pristine. You can still read Marauder, it's not worn off. The back looks like so. Now I'm not gonna say there's no scratches on the headstock, but it is very, very clean. To the point where I'm too scared to change the strings. It's just a great surviving example. Because on top of all this, you gotta remember, this was a student grade level guitar. It wasn't meant to be ever kept as a collectible like a 2550. It was meant to be trashed and thrashed. It was the thing you learned guitar on, an inexpensive option from the big G. But no, this one did not live the usual fate. She is a survivor. Even the back is nearly perfect on this one. It's usually the spots to go first, right here where it rubs against your body and where your arm rests on the top. And that's not to say that we don't have a few small scuffs on here, as well as those case rub areas where the finish is buffed up just a little bit on the edges that we talked about earlier. Thankfully, no neck pocket cracks. It is a completely survivor surviving example. But to save money, these were all top routed, so we don't have much to talk about back here except for our strap buttons and our usual locations. And then it is part of Gibson's bolt-on neck series. Now here's another thing I did not touch upon in our variances of the Gibson Marauders. So this is actually a very desirably spec'd version. You get the premium mahogany body, and you get a three-piece maple neck that is solid three pieces. The other main option is a one-piece maple neck. Now you might be saying, hey, why is three pieces better? Because the one-piece maple necks get scarf joints. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of the few Gibson models to be scarf jointed, where they join two pieces of wood together. And don't forget, these things live through the serial number changes. So you can find the early 70s, and then in 75, 76, 77, you can find your decal serials. But then after mid-77, you'll find this, the year, day, 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 year system. You can also find them Nashville built as well as Kalamazoo produced, which means you can get differing nut materials. You'll either have the small dots on the side, or you'll get the tortoise shell colors. It's a a little hard to see, but there you go on our scarf jointed one. And here's what it looks like if you have the Kalamazoo bone nut. Your tuner style will also vary. However, most of them are the Clusen inspired ones. But the one that this guitar has is actually a very desirable shortly lived set where it's got the Gibson Norlin branding on it. Sometimes you'll find these on true flying bees. But this version of the neck, since it's not scarf jointed on, actually still has the headstock wings that the scarf jointers did not have to have. So to truly collect one of every single Marauder <laughs> would be 
quite the undertaking because there's so many small spec changes. And that's just because, you know, the company used what they could to produce these for about eight years. So this is just a really cool example. You also have the volute on them. And once again, for clarity, the finish on the neck started life as gloss. It was not satin like the body, which is kind of funny because today people love the satin finishes on the neck because it's nice and smooth, easy to play. But yet many people prefer the gloss on the body for the aesthetics. So this is like the opposite of a modern day guitar. Now this one's a pretty good weight, 7 pounds, 13.7 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this one sounds. one there's not like a huge sound difference but here's your traditional bridge <laughs> traditional neck <laughs> and the closest thing you have between a 50 50 split <laughs> So there we go, the Minty Marauder back in my collection. This time, I honestly did not enjoy playing this thing at all. However, I think it's because I didn't change the strings. I was just too scared to scratch up the headstock because no matter how protective you are of it, sometimes a string just goes crazy. And I figure I'm probably not going to play this one much because it's more so a preservation piece for the history of this model. 
that people can actually see it at the Museum of How It Started Life back in 1979. But if you want to check out a different episode on like one of the Marauder Customs that I've did where I have a little bit more fun and not as worried about slightly scratching it, you can check those out. I know just how impossible it would be to find another one in this kind of shape. But all right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed learning about the existence of this ridiculously clean Gibson Marauder from the year 1979. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.